welcome everyone to this session on active learning with video. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Lando and I am um, an educational technologist at uh, City University London. And I'm also the co-chair of our new, well, it's not that new actually, it's over a year old, but the sort of active learning special interest group. Um, this is the link to the, uh, to the group, so please do join it. Um, as I was saying, I am. It, it, it started in, um, I think, last year in uh, January, in uh, July, 2020. So I've lost all sense of time, as a lot of people have in these past two years. Um, so it, it still feels really new. Uh, maybe we haven't, um, you know, done as much as as we could have, because we've obviously all been swamped with uh, a sort of uh, new new turns in the uh, in the pandemic tale at work and so forth. However, it's not only for, even though I do work in higher education, um, it's not only for uh, people who work in higher education, but from all sectors, um, including further education, um, primary and 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 more. Um, just a quick poll here, or quick hands up if you know where all the icons are. Um, is anyone here from uh, further education or adult community learning? If anybody wants to put their hands up, or who's who's here from higher education? Okay, right, right, right. So mostly, mostly, I think from HE. Anyone from FE? Who was in the Lente? Was uh, okay. I think we're mainly from higher education. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm my background. I'm currently working in higher education as an educational technologist, but my background is um. Um, as a teacher in further education. So I think a lot of, it's quite interesting how um, ideas across the different sectors could sort of, you know, could could, um, could help actually. So that's why I think this, the active learning special interest groups focus on different sectors is, is quite a good one because I think we can learn a lot from each other. Right, so, um, so today's session is, uh, as promised, it's on active um, uh, learning using video. And I'm hoping it's going to be um, a sort of conversation, really, that we all bring different stuff to the table. And what I'm going to bring to the table is this Evoli tool, a video tagging tool. But um, as I say, please do, do put any other ideas in the chat or, you know, turn on your microphone. Um, and these are just some random stats I've got. I'm sure there's, you know, better ones out there. And again, if you do know of any, do post them into the chat. But this is the stuff that I was just thinking about in terms of the last two years since the beginning of the, the pandemic. Um, how much has video uh, sort of video for learning? Um, it, it must have expanded so much. So I said some random stats here. So some Google stats on 120% global increase in, in daily views of videos for home learning, or how has lockdown changed video learning? That's from the sort of learning and development um, sector for sort of human resources. So 53% increase in video learning views, very random there. How to videos related to guitar, I'm assuming learning how to play the guitar, and over 160 million views globally um, uh, in, in a month. So that's from March till April. And then probably the last one, which is obviously more relevant to higher education, uh, looking at Echo 360, the lecture capture platform, saying that um, users created 40 years of video content in the sort of final two weeks of March 2020. So it just, you know, that's just a sort of real random sample of just the amount of video that was produced or has been produced in such a small uh, period of time with the, you know, with the pandemic. Um, and it will be really interesting to sort of have bigger, bigger data around that over the past two years, but must, must be enormous. It must be really interesting data. So video for learning is, you know, has, has obviously been 
a major sort of um, major increase in that. But I think one of the things that does remain is is this statement really. I don't know uh, if you disagree or agree with it. Do post in the chat your thoughts about it. Um, but I think this is something that I've um, been hearing from sort of student feedback come um, and student union survey was carried out over, you know, last in 2020, 2021, where students were kind of saying they were feeling quite sort of tired watching so much video content, um, you know, particularly uh, with um, being at home with the sort of great uh, pivot online, but watching hours and hours of video content is uh, quite exhausting and, and, and because, yeah, they're quite a passive experience. So I think that's the challenge for today. Have you thought about that? Okay, so what I'm hoping um, we can do, as usual, bring up a good old Padlet. Uh, we do always like a Padlet. Um, if you could just quickly go into this Padlet and just post any uh, ideas. Sorry, I'm just trying to find myself. So the Evoli platform, what basically it is, it's a video tagging tool where they um, um, uh, created this this video tool uh, platform, uh, students um, would access this uh, video 24 hours before they have a session with a with a tutor, and they would be look watch the video and tag, uh, ask questions, um, say if they liked it or if they didn't like it, and then 24 hours before um, the uh, session, the tutor would look at the videos, look at all the data, and then kind of see what were the sticking points, what students were saying about the video, what concepts they were having difficulty with, and then they would sort of um, uh, plan the session accordingly. So in that way, they were sort of engaging the students in um, planning the lesson together effectively, so creating more of a dialogic approach it's a really simple tool there's nothing uh complicated about it at all but what, what i really liked about it was the approach um the approach which was engaging the student while watching the video and um supporting the students in sort of uh coming in to the sort to kind of planning the session if you will um, Evoli, in the spirit of open practice, can only be used with YouTube videos, um, and um, that's something um, that uh, you know I think uh, many of us uh, fed back saying, "Oh, we would like maybe to use it with videos in media space or something." Um, so that was something that you know uh, we did say. However, I mean, I would suggest if you were going to use it you could um, use it, uh, put a, a, a video on YouTube um, as unlisted for, you know, for a specified period of time, and then you can take it down. Yes, it's, it's very simple, Vanessa, I agree. It feels like nothing's really happening. Um, um, so yes, we have those kind of the the expressing the opinions or the, whether we like it or we don't like it. And then at the end, you get the students are presented with the summary of their feedback so they can give an overall evaluation of the video um, uh, as well as the, um, you know, the, the, the tagging function there. So um, what the tutor um, does, the tutor dashboard, is they go into um, the notes or the feedback and they can see the, um, the data. Uh, so the blue data, the, it shows that um, you know, students appreciated the video. So there's quite a lot of, I think, interestingly, sort of emotional feedback as well. How did you feel about the video? Did you enjoy it? Did you like it? So it's not only did you understand it. Um, uh, so we, the yellow one is, you know, we didn't like that bit. We didn't understand that bit. And then the pink are all the questions. 
this one from um, Gla University of Glasgow, Emily Nordman and Carolina Kapatetzel, and that was a, an, um, a blog on the Echo 360, and I thought that was a, a, an interesting one, which is watch parties. I don't know if anyone has come across doing some watch parties with students. Yes, um, I think that's important. Thank you, Teresa. I think um, I think you know something like the Evoli tool. It's um, it's a simple tool, um, but um, you know, it, and it's very plain what it what the thinking behind it. Um, yeah, uh, really great. Uh, thank you, Vicky. It, um, I think it's such a simple principle behind the use of Evoli. Uh, but I'm sure we could, you know, similar things can be done with the tools that you already have in your institution. So, for example, you know, with um, Lecture Capture, Echo 360, Panotto. Oh, OK. <laughs> um, and obviously we have H5P. So, you know, I think um, doing something like a video tagging using this kind of approach can, is, is something that can be done um uh with tools we already have it doesn't have to be evolite but obviously evolite is very um it's a very simple it's very straightforward it says what it does on the pack okay thank you darren yes that's definite i think they're really open to any any suggestions um as i'm saying it's an open source it's done for the sort of community. There's a real spirit of openness in the project. So um, uh, something also to feed uh, back to them and free as um, uh, uh, most importantly. Yes, with the watch party, I don't know if um, uh, who was from um, Vicky. Would you like to tell us a little bit about the watch parties? Yeah, sure. Sorry for joining late. I, I thought the meeting started um, later than it did. But um, oh, no, just to kind of shenanigans, um, yeah. <laughs> I'll watch the recording afterwards. But um, yeah, just to contribute, I know that people um, in psychology, a number of the staff there use Netflix watch parties. Um, so that obviously not subject specific, but as a way of kind of getting the students to feel comfortable and, and especially when you're working in the online environment where students are studying remotely it was a way for students to get to know their teachers and feel comfortable and um, being able to sort of participate in chat so it was almost like um, onboarding them that then for engaging in more kind of subject specific online conversations yeah i mean i really like the idea of this watch parties from the blog that i was reading about how um the tutor or the teachers can sit with the students, watch the content together, but then be able to sort of have a conversation and and you know uh, take answers as they watch the content together, rather than having that sort of unidirectional you know uh, you know the teachers talking on the video, giving a lecture, and and the students are passively watching. I just love the idea of both of them being in the audience watching the content. Thank you, Teresa. Sorry. Yeah, no, I was just going to say that's that's exactly how we did it with the dissection room, um, because w in the first lockdown, the students couldn't go into the dissection room at all. So um, we filmed it <laughs> for only within our, you know, our eyes and the teacher would be in there saying, OK, now here's the gallbladder and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And so he would just be explaining what he had previously filmed right there in it was in blackboard collaborate just like this and yeah i mean it was better than nothing <laughs> okay but um uh so a good feedback from the students yeah actually very positive um in a sense i think they you know the dissection room for first years it's, it's a scary thing and i think in a way they kind of preferred this you know yeah 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 it gives that um and i just like the idea of the teacher being with them hand holding them through the 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 information um yeah i could imagine it must be quite a nice nice feeling to have that sort of well that distance as well as someone by your side rather than in front of you if you see what i'm saying so some nice ideas there 
And um, any anything, um, any other, I mean, so um, as I said, I, I um, suggested Evoli as being, um, a, an, uh, you know, a, um, a good or an interesting sort of take on how to make active, make video learning active and love this idea from uh, Glasgow on the watch parties. Any other ideas there? that we can share. I'm just looking at the Padlet at the moment. Lifesaver. Oh, well, I don't know if anybody wants to mention Lifesaver, would love to do an interactive film. So is that like a scenario based learning? Whoever put the Lifesaver link into the Padlet? Okay, Mark, would you like to tell us a little bit about it? Mm. Okay. So I suppose that's going to scenario based learning. So you kind of choose which the best way, making that very active. Yes, yes, that that is really a lovely, a lovely example there. And the other one also, um, H5P interactive video tool for embedding questions and points on engagement. Any suggestions on how to make the most of questions in videos? Maybe that, again, that's kind of scenario based choice. So, you know, at this point, what do you think the best thing to do is A or B? Would, could, that could be a, a question. Yeah, Cultura has a quiz feature. Phil, would you like to tell us a bit more what you mean by the community version? It's extens extensible. Um, uh, it was a few years ago I was working with the community version, uh, which I think is more open source than the, the one that you have to purchase. Um, it's usually something like six months behind the, the commercial version. Um, mm -hmm. It has APIs that you can you can actually tap into and stuff like that. Um, and I've often wondered whether it would be possible to create an interface, well, like the the one that you just demonstrated, the Evoli one, um, but also um, particularly with the idea of branching uh, videos so that students can answer questions. That were posed in the video and depending on their answer it takes you to a different video or a different part of the video yes yes this this scenario branching thing a lot of work i mean they all sound amazing these uh, these these different options um but i think the the big answer we'll get back from most uh, most practitioners is it's a lot of work any suggestions around that about um, you know what's um, simple, simple ideas to support the you know the the a quick um, engagement or quick sort of uh, development of, of resources for uh, active learning with video. I do wonder sometimes if people aren't prepared to put the work in, then um, maybe they should just hand out books instead of bothering to give lectures. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just going back to basics there. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But um, I think one of the things about the Evoli one is if you have a video, um, you just put it on YouTube and you put it in Evoli and it doesn't involve that much effort really. And it's quite a quick, quick and sort of dirty way of just bunging in some, uh, that's not a good word, but you know, just in, uh, incorporating some active elements to, to the video. I mean, that, um, that might be a nice one as well. Um, one area of concern that's come up in our institution that we have few tools that offer video tagging. Sorry, Vicky, would you like yeah. to expand on that? So we've, we've got Cultura and we've got um, Talis Elevate, and that provides an opportunity to, for students to tag 
um, and comment on video. And we've got Echo 360 as well. So I think from an institutional perspective, it's a, it, there's a sort of perhaps not necessarily a concern, but maybe a need to kind of outline, you know, how should staff be using the different platforms? Should staff feel free to use all the functionality of the different programmes or should they use um, some programmes consistently for specific things um, so that you know it's also rolled into um, students and, and how familiar they are um, in terms of their digital literacies and engaging with material. Mm -hmm. So I, I think you know un our university is, is um, an institute, I don't know about other institutions but but we seem to like having you know one tool for the job and I think it just throws people when you have different technologies that can do similar things. It's like, oh, which one should we use, really? So I don't know if that's something other people have come across as well. Thank you, Nikki. Um, is it? Yeah, that's an interesting. That's an interesting question. Is it about um, saying supporting an approach? Oh, thank you, Nilante. Thank you rather than um focusing on the on the different um sort of uh tools could that be yeah it's, i think it's about upskilling and kind of recommending to staff that you know you can use these different tools but we would recommend doing it this way for example um so yeah obviously this is a case study is a proven point of echo 360 working well for um you know watch parties so should this then be the sort of this is the, the platform we use for that type of activity or do we give people choice in using different tools so i think that's something probably all institutions kind of think about yes yes um yeah i mean i and i can see why the confusion does happen especially if they're very similar and there's no you know it's not clear what the real difference is and and you know best to focus on a few good ones and let yes, everybody know I, where they are i think sophie commented on that students struggle with that stepping outside of the vle and I, I, that's something i've heard is that students like to know where they are that familiarity of of common tools and then once you start introducing new ones it becomes a bit of cognitive overload yeah it's that um what's well, a kind of um uh mul multiple economy isn't it so this mixed bag but then on the other hand you could it could be argued that you know once you are in the real world in the work world you probably will have to be dealing with lots of different um tools as well so being sort of flexible in your approach might be a key digital skill as well But um, yeah, that's a that's a a, a complex question. Um, I'm still looking at the Padlet, and there's a, a tired. If students are tired of videos, were they tired of lectures delivered in a similar way, i.e., lacking interactivity? I think I think that's a good point. Who um who who the person who said that? Um, I think part of the you know, rethinking about how videos and, and the, the sort of passive experience of video is all part of the rethinking of the whole, um, you know, the whole sort of lecture model, I think. I don't know um, if um, uh, most of you agree with that or there's something else about that. Um, also, other comments from the Padlet that um, Alt run a CPD webinar last year on effective instructional videos, which was very useful. So that might be, I wonder if a recording of the session is available. So that might be a good thing to look for to see if that is available. Um, okay. Okay, and um, also some comments about people working with Panopto, but finding it very fiddly. Um, we're again going back to the Evo, Evo Live. It's very simple. It really, and um, I think I tried to do something similar on Echo 360, and I, I found that very fiddly as well. So fiddly, I think, is definitely um, something <laughs> that is a problem um, and again something that I really liked about Evoli was just the simplicity of it maybe even too simple possibly but um, I, you know I certainly appreciated that <laughs> uh, so I think um, see people are uh, wondering and needing to go and everything so um,
just to ask, um, yeah, it's a good reason to try Vola. Very simple. Um, It'd be great to hear who would uh, who is interested in 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 trying Evoli. Who would uh, be um, trying it out? Teresa, are you going to be trying it? Yeah, I think I will. Um, I've got to teach some um, students next week about online teaching, and it might be just a cool thing to try something they've definitely never seen before. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and it is, um, it's, going to, it's so simple. So even just like an induction video, something really light touch and, you know, not too um, heavy uh, in terms of, um, you know, uh, content, just a nice way to, uh, to sort of kick an activity or a session off. Someone also mentioned voice thread. Um, I don't know who's that. Does anyone um, here use, ever used voice thread, which is something I've seen around for years. And I've always found it really interesting, um, but I've never had the opportunity to use it. Um, has anyone ever, so conversations? Oh yeah, I'm going to put the Padlet uh, link in. Um, let me see. Uh, I, I think I have it here. Yep. Okay. And so, yeah, please do carry on adding any anything there. That has happened to me again. <laughs> okay. Yes. Has anyone had any experience with uh, voice thread? Okay, Teresa, I've used voice thread in the past. It was good for English teaching. That's right. Well, my background, yes, was is, is in English teaching. And in fact, I really wanted to, to use it in that context. So simple recording of voice in a discussion board type arrangement. So a bit like um, um, the, the quite new one, the Flipgrid, um, getting students to record themselves and record each other, um, record their answers as well to to video, so that's quite a, a nice one as well. Flipgrid, I think, is very similar to uh, to voice th um, thread. Okay, um, unless we have anything with anybody else to, ah, uh, yes, I think. <laughs> and just the last point about the G, the 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 data compliancy thing with the Evoli. I have to admit that um, I had to put it through the um, a data um, check with uh, my IT department, and it um, it got through uh, as long as I promised to use the anonymous um, uh, for, uh, ask students to kind of access the the Avoli platform anonymously. Um, so it gives you both option where either students um, log on with their with their email and they create a password or they can, as I think um, most of you have done now, uh, you log on anonymously. So uh, um, that that's again another quick win there as well. But certainly to use these things, you have to find out what your specific, um, uh, you know, what, what, how your your IT um, um, yeah, what what your university sort of uh, uh, wants from you in terms of using any external tools. So you need to check that out definitely. And as I was saying, this is a quick, uh, an easy one because it is um, you do have that anonymous option there. Okay, so thank you very much, everybody. Uh, apologies for the technical ah um, of uh, Blackboard Collaborate. <laughs> so chucked me off there. Um, uh, just a couple of links there, which is the um, uh, a blog that I wrote about. Oh, thank you, uh, Vicky. A blog um, that I wrote on um, 
uh, about the Evoli tool back in um, in 2020 because uh, actually the I was introduced to it just before the pandemic broke out in February um, and uh, they were kind of introducing it as sort of 21st century learning this wasn't the only tool there uh, and it all seems like oh this is you know really nice and it's good to have it's good to know but actually a few weeks later it was these kind of tools that you know, suddenly became incredibly relevant with the great sort of online pivot. So um, that was um, uh, a really interesting, um, an interesting conference in the in the light of what happened afterwards. And um, yeah, and then I put a, a link to the um, the blog on the uh, on the watch party, which uh, was great. Anyway, thank you so much for for coming to this session. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> that was a bit of a, a blackboard meltdown there, but uh, thank you for bearing with me and sticking to it. And um, yeah, do let us know if um, you know anything else comes up in terms of active learning video and do uh, join us as well. Thank you very much.